and that would count as positive area. It would say, I want to find the area between them, take all of it and add it all together. No matter what the sign is, add it together uh, because the, the absolute value will change it to a positive. You following that? Okay, so how do we actually do it? Well, here's your steps. Step one, you gotta set your function equal to zero. Do you know why you gotta set your function equal to zero? Not y intercepts. Hey, if you're trying to figure out where the function is above and below the x-axis, you better find out where it crosses the x-axis. That makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Yes. If you know where it crosses the x-axis, then you can perform a sign analysis test, plug in some numbers easily and say, oh, it's above, it's below, therefore I know when the area is going to be positive, when it's going to be negative. You get me? Okay. So set the function equal to zero and solve. So for us, I'll do that in purple so you see the work over here. We're just going to get 1 minus x squared equals zero. Well, there's only like two more steps. What are you going to do with this? Probably add x squared, yeah. And then you're going to? x squared. Yeah, sure. Square root plus or minus. <laughs> x equals negative 1 and 1. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Okay, now the next step. You gotta set this up correctly. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do a sign analysis test. Sign analysis. But you only need a few of these points. What points do you need? Well, let's see. Do you need the zero? Yeah. Do you need the two? Of course. Do you need the one? Yes. Do you need the negative one? No. No. No, you don't need that one. Why not? It's not the same. Don't care. So really, you're going to make a side analysis with your end points of your interval, your, your bounds of integration, and whatever points fall between them. That's it. So make it with your, your endpoints and your x-intercept that fall within those endpoints. Now, if you have no uh, points of intersection within your bound, you just use your two endpoints. Then you know what? You wouldn't even need that. Because okay. it's either all going to be positive, positive or, or all going to be negative. So you just test one and go with it. Yeah. So sign out of endpoints and any x-intercepts that happen to be within your bounds of integration. Well, let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to make a sign analysis test. Here's how sign analysis tests look in case you forgot. What you do is you take your bounds of integration first. The bounds of integration start at 0 and they end at 2. You take any of those x-intercepts that you had. Those are the places where you're crossing the x-axis, and therefore that's the places where your signs could possibly change. Well, only one of them. That's one. Feel okay with your sign analysis so far? After that, after you make that, that number line, you just determine when f of x is above 0 and f of x is below 0. That's just plugging in a point. Plug in one point for each of these intervals. That's only two. You don't have to go over here. I right? don't care. I don't care about that one either. I care about these two intervals. Plug in one point, see whether it's above or below the x-axis. Recall that if it's above the x-axis, the area has to be positive. If it's below the x-axis, the area will be negative. And this is the separating point between those two areas. That's why we set it equal to zero. So we're going to determine when f of x is greater than zero. That would be above the x-axis. Or less than 0, below the x-axis. Have you done it already? 
You plug in probably one half. Where are we plugging this in, by the way? To our original function. Yeah, plug in the function. It's going to tell you, I don't care about the number, I care about the sign of the number. Which one's one half? Positive. positive. Okay, so this is positive and this one's negative? Cool. What this says is that from 0 to 1, I'm above the x-axis. From 1 to 2, I'm below the x-axis. We're going to have to come up with that, that sign change. We're going to do it right now. What we do is we're going to split up the integral using the definition for absolute value. Okay, here we go. This is a good part. Let's find total area. So where are we going to start and where are we going to stop for our first integral? Where are we going to start? Zero to where? Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, think back to this. What the absolute value of x says, it's, uh, sorry, absolute value of f of x says is if it's positive, you leave it alone. If it's negative, you change the sign. So when this is positive, here's what we're going to do. Between 0 and 1, do I change the sign or not? What do you think? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to do 1 minus x squared. Why don't we have the absolute value still? I absolutely not. I'm actually using the definition of absolute value. Right? I'm not sure because you, you don't need it. The absolute value of that, you're not changing the sign. I'm actually using this to change it. I'm saying, well, if f of x is positive for that region, then I know the absolute value of f of x is simply f of x. I know that this is positive for this region, therefore the absolute value of f of x is simply f of x. That's the, that is what this says. It says, hey, if it's positive, you don't change anything about it. You basically just drop your absolute value signs. Are you with me on that? Okay, dx plus Again, the reason why we do this, just like the piecewise example, do you recall that between 0 and 2, if I find some intermediate point, I can split up my integral from 0 to 1, and then also from 1 to 2. You remember that? It's continuous, no problems, no breaks. That's great. Between 0 and 2, we're going to go 0 to 1. We're going to go 1 to 2. Now, between 1 to 2, this is why we did our sign analysis test, our function is negative, which says it's below the x-axis. It says that the absolute value of x, well, if f of x is negative, you're going to have to change that sign. You follow? You can't just drop the absolute value because it's not positive. You go, all right. Well, back up here, I'm going to have 1 minus x squared, sure, but negative. If it makes you feel better, I can do this too. We do lots of things, so it's 1. Show of hands, how many will be okay with that so far? Okay, I'm not going to do much of a recap. I'm just going to say what we're doing here is basically using a sign analysis to our advantage to determine when our function is positive and negative. Where it is positive for that region, you leave it alone. You, you, you just write it. No absolute value. Where it's negative, you just write it, but you have the negative in front of it. This is the reason why, though, is because we have this scenario. Because we know if the function is above the x-axis, the area will be positive. If the, area is, if the function is below the x-axis, it will be negative. And that one nice property that said if you have a continuous function between two points, you can split up that integral into two different integrals by using some number that's between them. That, that's all these properties coming together. There's a lot of properties we're actually using here to be able to do this. It's kind of cool. Now, what I would do with this integral, I wouldn't distribute this, I'd pull the negative out. I would do, I'd just pull the negative out, just make it a minus. That means that the area is 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared dx minus 1 to 2, 1 minus x squared dx. I'm doing this just so you can see this, this part of it. Check it out. You know this area is positive, right? 
right? You know this area is going to be negative, right? Minus the negative area, that's adding the area. That's all this really does for you. Why don't you go ahead and do those? See what you get. Did you get two? Yes. I got two. I don't know if I did or I did it pretty quick. Did you get two? If you didn't get two, it's all fraction work, but hopefully you got two. How many people were able to make it down to this part right there, that part, the integral? Did you get that far? Good. Did you plug in all the numbers at least this far? Yeah. From here on out, it's just fraction work. Uh, calculators are fine. I don't care. As long as you're able to get the right answer down here, be able to do that. Uh, can someone please double check my work to make sure that I am correct on that? Yeah. Make sure all my signs are right. You did? How many double checks do I have that got two? Good for you. Good for me, actually. I did. Good. Shoot. Come on.